it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these Christmas boots and we're going to add a little modern twist by using some sparkle yarns and I'll talk to you about that in just a minute now this Christmas boot was one that was given to me let's just say in the early 70s <laughs> by a Sunday school teacher she had filled the toe with newspaper and then she added a big paper cup and filled it with those great hard Christmas candies you know the ones shaped like ribbons and little pillows that tasted like clove and cinnamon well I had this all packed away and when I was doing some looking for some great ideas for Christmas in July I remembered this boot and I thought it would be great fun to show you how it's put together how the squares are made and uh, share it with you so the boot measures about eight inches across maybe a little more and then eight inches tall and you're gonna need to make 13 of these squares but don't worry I'm gonna show you how to make the square as well as how to put the whole boot together now you can find the pattern on my blog as well as lots of pictures if you prefer some pictures and that link is in the notes underneath this video to make the vintage Christmas boot you're going to need some medium weight number four yarns I'm going to be using these three colors they're the I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby now you're going to need a total of about one ounce of each color and then you'll need about a half ounce to an ounce for joining all your squares together so it'll be about a total of three and a half to four ounces you can use one two three or four or however many colors that you want and you don't even have to make it Christmassy you can use it for other things as well but I'm using like I said the white the green and the red from Hobby Lobby the I love this yarn medium weight number four yarns and that is acrylic by the way you're going to need your needle for weaving in your ends and we're going to have a lot of ends to weave in when we're making these squares you'll need your scissors and then we're going to be stitching with our H hook which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook the other thing you're going to need is a jar or container for putting in the leg portion of your boot and I found these neat jars they're 32 ounces they have a fun little edge and you can get a pack of four of these at your local Walmart I think I paid nine dollars for four of them and it's a good idea to go with the jars that have a wide mouth another option is you can buy the 32 ounce mayonnaise you can buy the 32 ounce um, pickles or other items maybe peanut butter and you can even use plastic containers as long as they're wide enough they're 32 ounces and they have the wide mouth at the top and I like to have a lid so that what I'm putting in there maybe cookies or treats or maybe even a hot cocoa mix when I'm giving it as a gift so that the contents don't come out of the top the other thing you're gonna need is a couple of sheets of tissue paper um, I have some tissue paper I'm one of those people that save it and so I have a couple of sheets here I'm gonna wad it up and stick it in the toe some other options for this is your plastic bags as long as they're white you know we don't want to throw those away we want to reuse them and so that will work as well another option is to take a nylon or a sock stuff it full of stuffing and put that in the toe of your boot just remember you want to make sure that it's not a color that's going to show through the holes all right gather up what you need and let's get started this is the square that we're going to be making row one will be red row two will be green and then row three will be white now you can again like I said use any colors that you would like for yours you can use two colors like my original Christmas boot is made in you can do it all in one color doesn't matter whatever you prefer and you're going to need to make 13 of these squares all right let's get started I'm going to begin with the red and I've got my other yarns all here ready to go now we're going to begin with our slip knot 
those out of the way so they're not distracting. We're going to chain five. And we're going to join this chain five into a circle. We'll make that little stay knot that keeps our circle together. Put your hook in, pull up a loop, and chain three. This chain three counts as our first double crochet. And so we're going to stitch 11 more double crochets, so we have a total of 12. So that makes two, and just in case you can't remember how to do a double crochet, yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, and pull it through the second two. That's our double crochet. All right, let's see how many I've stitched. Here's my chain three, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need two more. And two. All right, so now I have 12 double crochets. I'm going to join to the top of my chain three with a slip stitch. And I'm going to cut my yarn. One thing you do want to do is if you have a hole in the center, you can turn that over and gently pull on that string and that will close up that hole. And then we can weave that in when we finish the first square. And that's how row one should look. All right, let's do row two. We're going to bring in our next color, which is our green. And then we're going to chain three. Let's get that tail out of the way. One, two, and three. Now, when you're changing colors and your chain three counts as your first double crochet, do your chain three after your color change. Because if I would have went ahead and did this chain three in red, I would have one stitch the wrong color on that row. All right, we're going to place one double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. And then we're going to place two double crochets in each of those stitches around. Our first row had 12, and so row two is going to have 24 double crochets. Two double crochets in each of those 12 double crochets around. And remember, our chain three counted as our first double crochet. We're going to work this all the way around, and then we'll join to the top of our chain three. I've stitched those two double crochets in each stitch around. I now have 24 double crochets. I'm going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch and I've gone ahead and cut my yarn because I'm going to bring in my next color which is my sparkle white. All right, so now I'm going to chain three and again this chain three counts as my first double crochet. Now in row three, we're going to be forming the corners and the sides. And so our chain three counts is our first double crochet. And in that same stitch, we're going to double crochet two more times, one and two. We're going to chain two. And then we're going to stitch three double crochets in that same stitch. And that's going to form our first corner. Now 
and we're going to only chain one. There's our first corner, three double crochets because our chain three counted as our first, chain two, and three double crochets. Now we're going to skip the next two double crochets and then stitch three double crochets in the next double crochet. So one, two, and three. And then we'll chain one again. Some more yarn out here. All right, now we're going to skip the next two double crochets and we're going to stitch another corner in the next stitch. So we skip two and then we're going to stitch a corner in the next stitch. So we'll stitch three double crochets, one, two, and three. Chain two and then three double crochets in the same stitch. And that's going to be our second corner. And chain one. And then again, we'll skip the next two stitches and stitch three double crochets in the next. and chain one. And then we'll repeat what we did here two more times. We'll skip two, make a corner, skip two, three double crochets, skip two, make a corner, then skip two and three double crochets. Then we'll join to the top of our chain three. I repeated on those two sides, the corner, skip two, chain one, three double crochets, chain one, skip two, and the corner. Repeated that. Now I'm going to join to my chain three, and then I'm going to slip stitch to the corner. And I just like to do it this way, you don't have to. I just like to do it that way, so I'm tying off in the corner. So we're going to cut that, tie that off, and then you'll notice if you look to the back of your square that we have a lot of ends to tie in. And what I recommend is that you go ahead and weave in with your needle all these ends before you try to assemble the boot. Remember, we're going to need to make 13 of these squares, and so that's going to be a lot of weaving in, especially if you changed colors three times. But I just think it, it makes it go a lot smoother if you go ahead and weave in all those ends and have it all completed, and then Go ahead and make all 13 of your squares, and then I'll show you how to put it together into the boot. So here are my 13 granny squares. They've all been tidied up, and all the ends are all woved in, so I don't have to worry about that. All I need to do now is assemble my boot. And so what we're going to do is we're going to begin with the first five and we'll lay them all out flat in a nice line. And then we're gonna join them all together. And the way we're going to do that is choose a yarn you want to use to hook them together or sew them together. And I'm going to use this white because that's what the row on my last row was made in. You can use whatever yarn that you choose. And so the way we'll do it is we'll take one square We'll put the right sides together. We'll go in the corner stitch and the corner stitch here. We'll bring that in. Make a little chain one just so it's together. Now we're going to slip stitch across. So you'll go in the outside loop on this side and the outside loop on the other side and stitch a slip stitch. Working all the way across. And a slip stitch, you pull the loop through, then you pull that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. One thing to remember is don't pull these stitches too tightly or you'll end up with the ends being a little bit puckered and then they won't fit together nicely. All right, so you go in the outside stitch and the outside stitch and stitch a slip stitch, but not too tightly. And we'll work all the way across. And 
If you prefer to use a needle and yarn to sew them, you can do that. Or if you prefer a different method of joining your squares, that's fine too. I just prefer this method for this project. Just remember to always use what works best for you, what's easiest and most comfortable, and the results that you're looking for. All right, so there's my last slip stitch. I'm going to cut my yarn, and I'm going to tie that off. So the first two are hooked together and you can see the reason that I like this method is you can see those front loops weren't worked and so they lay together nicely. All right, so now I need to do the next three so that I have five together. So I'll lay the next one on with the front sides together, the outsides on the out, and again, I'll join that yarn to the corner Make that little chain one and slip stitch across. And I'll do this till I have five of my squares in a nice line. Just repeating what I did over here till I have five squares hooked together. And then we'll flip them out in a nice row. So now I have five of the squares all stitched together. Here's the back where I've st slip stitched them together. And you see I have a lot of ends to weave in, but we'll get to that in just a second. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make two together, and then we're going to attach them here. And then we're going to do two more together and attach them here. And I know that looks strange. How in the world is that going to be a boot, right? Well, you just wait and I'll show you. Here's one that's already has two attached. Let's go ahead and do these two, and then I'll show you how to attach these to this. Here's the two that I already attached, and we're going to attach these two just like we did the other ones. We're going to put the fronts together with the back sides out. Again, join at the corner on the outside loop. Bring in our yarn, chain one, and slip stitch across without pulling too tightly. Because again, we don't want it to pucker up. And make sure you're going in those outside loops so that our squares lay together nicely. Almost there. All right, and to the corner. Put those outside loops. Slip stitch and tie off. And I don't know why, but I always give it a little stretch. Make sure it's not too puckered. All right, that's tied off. So now we have two pieces to attach to the other five square piece. The next thing we need to do is attach these two squares together pieces to the long part of our five. Now, you're going to attach it so you've got one on this end and two squares on this end. And we'll do it the same way. We'll lay it front to front. The only difference is we'll be going across both squares. We'll do this side and then we'll do this side. So we'll join our yarn in this corner and this corner. With our little chain one to get us on top. And we're going to do what we've been doing. The only difference is we're gonna work across two squares. All right, so we'll go in those front loops and the back loop on that side, the outside loops, and stitch our slip stitches across. And 
and of course I'm working across both squares. It would be silly to tie off our yarn and then rejoin to the next square. We're going to have enough ends we have to weave in. Do make sure that you're lined up here so that your squares stay nice and even. Make sure you stitch in the corner. There we go, I tied that one off a little snug. And so now I'm to the next corner of the next two squares. There we go. So that first square is attached, and now we're going to do the second square, making sure everything's lined up. And we'll just work right across there. Slip stitching in the outside loops. There we go. A little snag in my yarn there. All right, make sure everything's lined up. And now we're to that last corner. Cut our yarn and tie off. Oops, that didn't work, did it? Oh, I pulled the wrong string. <laughs> there we go. I'm like, what is going on there? All right, now, again, this is the front. And so now we have this side on and go ahead and put this side on exactly the same as you did this side. Only on the other side, of course. This is how your boot should look at this point. Well, it doesn't look much like a boot, does it? All right, so now we're going to form the bottom of the boot. Now this is the top or outside of the boot and this is the inside. And I've gone ahead and weaved all the ends in from those previous connections. And what we're going to do is we're going, what we're going to do here is we're going to put these two together like this. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. And we're going to slip stitch like we did. And you'll notice that this will form the back of the boot. We're going to stitch these two corners. And we're going to do it the same. We've got our outsides facing each other. We're going to go in the corner. There we go. Join our yarn, make that little chain one. And then we're gonna slip stitch on those outside loops down here to this corner. Now you could have waited to weave in all your ends if you wanted to, but I think that it, you know, if you can get all the ends weaved in as you go, it makes for an easier time, but you can wait, it's totally up to you. And like I always say, you do what's easiest for you. All right, I'm almost to that corner. Slip stitching on the outside loops. I'll tie off. And then you can see when we turn it over, that's going to be the heel. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Join that yarn in and slip stitch to the corner. All 
I did both of the back seams, lifted up that back square, so now we have the heel formed. Now we're going to form the toe, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to bring this up like this. All right, so we'll do the similar thing. We'll stitch up, and then we'll fold this and stitch like this. So we'll come up the side of this square and then the side of this square. All right, and then once we do that, we'll do the same thing on this side, and that will form the toe of the boot. All right, so I'm going to begin with this side of the toe of the boot. We're again still stitching with the right side in and the wrong side out. I'm going to join my yarn down to this corner. Make sure I'm lined up to this corner for this first section or this first square and we'll do what we've been doing. Slip stitching in those outside loops across the square, making sure everything is lined up. Oops, tried to go on the inside loop there. All right, we're about halfway to that corner. There we go. Making sure everything's lining up nicely. Well, sometimes the stitches are a little snug. Got to get in there. <laughs> All righty, so now we're to the corner. I'll put that last stitch in the corner. All right, so there I've slip stitched up. All right, now I'm going to slip stitch across here. And so we'll do the same thing. We won't cut our yarn, we'll just keep going. Because again, it doesn't make sense to tie off and then reattach. All right, so we'll just go across this one and do the same thing. Slip stitching in those outside loops and lining up our squares. If you make sure you put one in each of the double crochets and one in the chain one space, you should line up perfectly. And I say should. Sometimes even I get off. All right, one in these three double crochets. Move this over a little bit. All right, and now I'm in that corner, and I'm going to tie off. All right, so this is how it should look. We stitched up and then over, okay? And now we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll start down here, we'll stitch up to the corner, and then across, and this forms the boot toe of our boot. This is how your Christmas boot should look at this point. We stitched the sides up here for the heel and then we stitched these sides for the toe. The next thing we need to do is to form the band or the leg portion that comes up around the boot. And so you should have four squares left. You're going to need to attach all four of those squares and then attach it together here so that it's in a band. So here's the boot, here is the band, 
And what you're going to do is you're going to put this on here and you're going to stitch it together working all the way around so that this is attached on here. I'm going to begin on this side. Here's the front. I'm going to begin on this side, work my way around, and then do the front portion last. So I'm going to go in just like we have in the past in the corner, join my yarn with that chain one, lining everything up, and slip stitching across. And again, we're on the wrong side. The right side's on the inside right now. And I'm just slip stitching across, making sure everything's lined up, and still slip stitching in those outside loops. All right, I'm almost to this corner, making sure I'm lined up. Whoops, there we go. All right, so now I'm going to go across the back. So I'm going to grab those squares, or that square, the front and the back on here right now. All right, well, we do have a lot of strings to weave in, and I with this project, you are going to because you know, granny squares. <laughs> All right, so and I'm just going to go across the back, stitching those two squares together using those outside loops, trying to make sure everything's lined up. I'll continue to work across here, then I'll turn and line the next squares up until I reach the front. And the front's a little more complicated just because of how it lays, but it's not hard, and you can do it. Let's see, I got skipped one there. All right, so I'm just going to continue working around this square and the next. And then I'll show you how to put the front square on. I stitched around. Here's the first square, the second square, and the third square. And I just pushed them inside. Here is where I stitched around. And I just pushed them inside for now because it'll make it a little easier to do this front square because this is the toe of our boot. And we need to attach this last square. And if you just push that down inside, you can keep right on going. You don't have to tie off, cut your yarn or anything. You just keep right on going, stitching in those outside loops, lining up. And again, slip stitching in the outside loops. I know I keep saying that, but it does make it lay a lot nicer if you do it that way. And again, as I've said before, if you prefer a different method to join your squares together for this project, that's totally fine. I just like this method. All right, so I've worked my way across. There we go. Make sure I'm in that corner. Join to that corner. There we go. All right, well, we have a lot of strings to tie in. So we've stitched around. I'm going to pull this out, and this is how it looks on the wrong side, of course. And we have a lot of yarn strings ends to weave in. But at this point, let's pretend like we weave those in. I'll come back and do that later. We're going to turn it right side out. 
And like here I have a string poking out, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that to the inside. And this is the way that the boot should look if it's laying out flat. The last thing that we need to add to the top of our Christmas boot is the trim and a bow. And what we're going to do is we're going to start in one of the chain two spots. We're going to join our yarn and I'm just using red for my trim. We're going to chain three. Then we're going to stitch three more double crochets in this chain two space. Then in the next space, we're going to just stitch a single crochet. Then we'll go to the next space and we'll stitch three, I'm sorry, four double crochets. Then we'll go to the next, which is a chain two space, and we'll stitch a single crochet. Then we'll go to the next chain two space and stitch four double crochets. All right, we'll go to the next space and stitch a single crochet. So what we're doing is we're alternating single crochet with four double crochets, working all the way around the top of our Christmas boot. four double crochets, then we'll stitch a single, then we'll stitch four double crochets, and we're working in the chain two and chain one spaces. Four double crochets, single crochet, four double crochets, four, and a single crochet. Four double crochets and a single crochet. There's the fourth double crochet, we'll single crochet in that last chain two space, and then we'll join to the top of our chain three and cut our yarn. And that just gives us a nice trim on the top. I'll pull this back because I still have some weaving in to do on the inside of my stocking. All right, so there's that trim. And then on the front, on the front square, I've made a chain. I used red and green, and I chained about 30, 35 chains. Depends on how long you want your bow. All right, and then we'll just try to line that up and add that bow. All right, so the next thing we need to do is add some tissue paper. And I've already got some wadded up here. You can use, like I said, newspaper. You can use your leftover white plastic bags because we want to reuse them and not throw them away. And we just use that to sort of shape the toe. Then we take our jar. This is a 32 ounce jar that I got at Walmart. You can slide it in and then you can add cookies, treats, anything you want to, to your Christmas boot. And I kind of liked using the red and the green because I think it looks like Christmas wreaths. And this is how you make and assemble our vintage Christmas boot with a modern twist.